Good morning. Well, she's gone. She resigns. It is an historic day. Theresa May has uh, resigned on the steps of Downing Street within the past few minutes. It was an emotional speech, at the end of which Mrs May broke down in tears. She said she'd been proud to be the second female British Prime Minister, but she thinks she certainly won't be the last. She'll stand down as Conservative Party leader in two weeks' time. That's going to be Friday, June the 7th, and then a leadership contest will begin straight away. Uh, this was her just uh, 50 minutes ago on the steps of Downing Street. Ever since I first stepped through the door behind me as Prime Minister, I have striven to make the United Kingdom a country that works not just for a privileged few, but for everyone, and to honour the result of the EU referendum. Back in 2016, we gave the British people a choice. Against all predictions, the British people voted to leave the European Union. I feel as certain today as I did three years ago that in a democracy, if you give people a choice, you have a duty to implement what they decide. So I am today announcing that I will resign as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party on Friday the 7th of June, so that a successor can be chosen. It is, and will always remain, a matter of deep regret to me that I have not been able to deliver Brexit. Our politics may be under strain, but there is so much that is good about this country so much to be proud of, so much to be optimistic about. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold. The second female Prime Minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. OK, well, certainly uh, she was emotional. It may have been emotional for a lot of you to watch that in one way or the other. What happens now? Live now to number 10. ITN's political editor, Robert Peston, is there. I thought, Robert, it was classic Theresa May uh, basically saying, I did my bit, but it was those pesky MPs that spoilt it all. Well, she pointed out how challenging delivering Brexit has been and, you know, frankly, what's done for her is the fact that the one big job she was set, which was to take us out of the European Union, she has not delivered on. Uh, so one thing she didn't make reference to is that we had European parliamentary elections yesterday. Tory party are likely to come fourth or fifth in those elections. So I'm afraid her position became unsustainable. Um, her, a majority of her MPs told, uh, uh, very clearly wanted her out. And she's attempted to keep a little bit of dignity uh, by delaying the moment of her resignation by two weeks so that she can meet President Trump in 10 days' time. He's here on a state visit without the backdrop of those vying to take over from her running their campaigns. Those campaigns will start the following week. But even so, even though there's another two weeks for her to remain as Tory leader, nonetheless, she has sealed her own fate. And I've never actually seen anything quite like what happened at the end of that uh, address that she just gave to the nation. She broke down in tears. None of us have ever seen a Prime Minister uh, break down in that way. Quite sorry extraordinary. Sorry for her at that point, Peston. Did you feel sorry for her at that point? It was very emotional and she did break down. She looked very tired. I'm sure she hasn't had much sleep. Did you have any amount of sympathy for her? Look, I'm sure the whole nation feels sympathy for her. She has, in many ways, been the most resolute individual in that place, 10 Downing Street, that any of us have witnessed, in the sense that she has been under attack from her own MPs, from her ministers, from the opposition, from people uh, outside Parliament, relentlessly, for months, because yeah, of their fault anger was that? It's not at their her fault. failure That's to her deliver. fault, isn't it? I mean, Sorry, she, that's her, whose fault is that, I'm saying? I mean, it all went wrong, no, no, she no, called listen. that election. Sure. No, of course. I'm not trying to say this. It wasn't 
a disaster of, own, of her own making. She has made, many people would say, a whole series of very serious strategic errors, as you say, from calling that general election in 2017, which she did not have to call, barely share it, showing the enormous strain that she must have been under on her face. Today, she couldn't take it any longer and she broke down. And I'm simply saying, most yeah. humans across the country, if you've got any sympathy, will have just felt, whatever you feel about her as a politician, a twinge of sympathy. Um, Robert, her withdrawal agreement, is it now dead? Yeah, look, I think it is inconceivable uh, that her version of Brexit will be the version of Brexit that is uh, pushed through. Uh, the, the, the big issue really now is whether we will get a much harder form of Brexit or indeed no Brexit at all. In my view, the debate is now going to crystallise between something that most people characterise as a no-deal Brexit and a referendum. I would imagine that who, the, the, well, the, the most likely candidate to take over from her is Boris Johnson. He will, if he does take over as Prime Minister, he will then go to Brussels and say withdraw, take out the so-called backstop, this very controversial plan to keep open the border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, they, they, which Brexiters hate, which the Northern Ireland's DUP hates. He will go to Brussels and he will ask EU leaders to withdraw it from uh, the deal to take us out of the EU. They will say no. At that point, he will say, well, we're leaving without a deal. He will not be able to get a no-deal Brexit uh, ratified by the House of Commons. Uh, in my view, at that point, we are facing a general election. and We will face a general election between a Tory party wedded to a harder no-deal form of Brexit and a Labour Party, which I think by that point will almost certainly be in favour of a referendum. So, you know, strap yourself in. We're going to get a Tory leadership election first, and then, in my view, we will get a general election in October or November. Um, you, you know, like many people, you think... You know, Boris has a very good chance here. But it's a fascinating situation, Robert, where you would have both Boris and Jeremy Corbyn popular with the membership, but not so popular within their own parliamentary parties. Mm. Well, let's be absolutely clear. Although I think Boris Johnson is likely to emerge the winner. As you point out, there is a significant number of his own MPs who detest him, who will be desperately trying to rally around another candidate. But the membership loves him. If he gets through the first round of MPs' votes and he gets through to the uh, runoff with the membership, I think it is inevitable that he will win. You are correct that at that point there will be Tory MPs who will feel they cannot support him and they certainly certainly will not want to, to support his preferred version of a hard Brexit. That is one of the reasons why I anticipate there will be a general election. Uh, actually, more or less whoever becomes Tory leader, but particularly if he becomes Tory leader, because he will struggle to command a majority in the House of Commons. Yeah. Yeah. Robert, really appreciate your Thank take you, on uh, an historic and a very, very busy day. Uh, perhaps we'll talk before the end of the programme. Thank you very much indeed. Robert Peston Look there. Thank you, Robert. Me. Thank you. Do Thank you, you feel sorry much. for her when she broke uh, down? No. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I, I, and I didn't, and it's nothing party political, I'm going to say, but I thought it was typical Theresa May. She made it all about her. And she talked about Grenfell, where I would say, Grenfell, what have you done for those people? If I had been Prime Minister, I would, have set, up, the... I would have set up a park yeah. full of um, static caravans. I would have put them in. I would have had these people homed in, in the sort of lodges that we give away on this programme. Mm. Um, instead of what is happening there w with people with that. I think she talks like a preacher. Her father was a preacher. I thought it was a very long resignation speech, well, but I did. I could not help but feel for her at that moment when her voice broke and she said, you know, that's yes, but, it, but a it, country that I'm proud of. But it is of. all... But, you see, you know, we elect people to carry out our will. Yeah. But she's just saying, basically, um, you know, you've got rid of me, even though I'm brilliant. So she just stood there and told us how brilliant she was. Was she really? And but again, I say, I'm that, not they? making they a... They never stand and say, I've that, been an utter failure, well, so I've got to that, go now. That is, well, it's obvious she's been... She's yeah. been the worst Prime Minister maybe this country has ever had. So try, stop trying to it's tell us anything legacy, different. It's not a great legacy, is it, to go written in the history books? Well, um, I think the thing is, I don't wish to be party political about that, because actually I don't vote for any of them. I'm as cynical about all of them, whatever hue uh, there is. 
But uh, yes, would I be emotional if I was resigning? Yes, I probably would be. But all of this, as Robert Peston said, is trouble of her own making. She doesn't listen to people. Go, go, go. Are you moved by this? You're going to, we're going to play this yeah, again. And uh, then it's going to be the subject of our uh, phone in today. Let's okay. have another look at that very emotional moment outside Downing Street. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Oh, do you from, feel from, sorry for her? From a woman who I hear politically takes no advice, has no connection with the back benches, um, does not listen to other people, and I've heard that from professional after professional advisor. So it's just interesting. It's interesting.